supplements, I do take, but with collagen, if you're going to take the time to supplement it, you want to get a supplement that has all different types of collagen because your body utilizes different types of collagen to do different things, whether it's your stomach lining, your connective tissue and what have you. So get a multi collagen supplement, hit training 100% yes. Absolutely all day long. Hit training burns more calories when you're doing it, more calories when the workout's done. It also accelerates your level of fitness because it's intelligently increasing what's called the stress adaptation response. So we're stressing the body more by training at a higher intensity, but you're doing it for a shorter duration and you've got breaks in between. So you're reducing your risk of injury. Now I wouldn't make every workout hit for that very reason, but I would do at least two of them a week. Paleo kind of, I mean, I don't even know what that is. I, I have to be honest, I've read 50 different versions of it. I, I literally have. Sometimes they do honey, sometimes they don't. Sometimes quinoa is the devil and the saponins cause inflammation, which is totally untrue and proven to be untrue. But you know, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they eat nuts, oh, nuts or seeds, no they're not. Like it's just none of it, it's all over the place and there's zero logic to it. So, and, and the concept that Paleolithic man ate this way has also been proven false. In fact, Paleolithic man ate like an ape. A lot of bark, a lot of berries and natural grasses. Like there's just like, I mean, I guess if you did a paleo plan and you were intelligent about it and you made it predominantly plant-based, clean meat that you, know, you didn't eat too much of um, and you avoided processed grains, hell yeah, fair enough. But I don't think paleo knows what paleo is. I, I really don't. Because I've heard, again, like 50 different versions of it. I've yet to figure out what the diet actually is. Turmeric, yes. But remember, you know, too much of anything is bad, right? So if you're gonna do it, like one shot of it a day, like don't be putting it in your food and doing five shots and you know, too much of it is hard on the system. So like, you wanna work it into like, you know, a little power shot? Absolutely, you wanna mix it into some Indian food? Great, but beyond that, balance. Again, that's the, that's the golden rule. Self-care, I mean, 100%. That's a, not even a question, is it? <laughs> Nut milk, absolutely. If you like it, 100%. However, one caveat. Um, almond milk, almonds are heavily sprayed with pesticides um, and they're really hard on the environment. They use a ton of water. So personally, I say coconut milk. And there's um, a pea milk that people are really liking. I actually haven't tried it, called Ripple, um, which is a great option. Um, and oat milk is also a big thing right now. So, I mean, yes to, to, to nut milk, but like almond, unless it's organic, there are other options. Whole30 really just seems to be a, a common sense practice eating whole foods for 30 days. So like, why not? Intermittent fasting, really interesting. Um, a lot of people have a very confused idea about what the word fasting means. Fasting means a period where we're not eating. It does not mean starvation. And you think those two things mean the same thing, but they don't at all. So when you get into something like extreme calorie deprivation, which like 500 calories a day, that's, that's starvation. That's, that's not intermittent fasting, you're starving the body. You're cannibalizing your own tissue. There's a process called autophagy where your body eats dead or senescent cells. This is a good thing, right? Because those things accumulate and you start to develop things like cancer and what have you. But of course, anything to the extreme, you're gonna compromise bone density, muscle tissue, and so on. 500 calories a day is absolutely no 100% bad idea. When we look at the benefits of fasting, it actually has nothing to do with weight loss. It has everything to do with anti-aging because you have less oxidative stress on the system and you're giving your body a period of time where it doesn't have to worry or designate its energy to breaking down food. So it can take the time to, again, break down senescent cells or those, those cell, zombie cells they're called that can lead to disease and you know, do some housekeeping on the body. With that said, the best way to practice it, practice it is calorie restriction, which means we're not eating more than we burn in a day, but we're not starving the body either. You're restricting your calories and you've 
attained an equilibrium. So, wonderful. And your period of fast, it's called breakfast. Oh, I'm the 80-20 queen, 100% all day long. I don't believe in the concept of cheat days for so many reasons. On a psychological level, I think it's bad. It's like this binge, purge, binge, purge. But on a cheat day, like somebody can house thousands of calories and not even realize it. I mean, I could. If you let me loose and said you're free to go, <laughs> I could put down like four or 5,000 calories, easy. I mean, a pint of ice cream I could do for breakfast. So 80-20 is the way to go where you get to indulge every day, but you work it into a uh, framework, if you will, that's calorie controlled. So every day, you take 20% of your allotted calories and you make it foods that are not terrible for you, but like less than healthy. And it works perfectly for me and for anybody else I've ever worked with. Keto, like if you love it, which is highly unlikely, it has its massive downsides. If you don't love it, which is more than likely, and you're doing it because you think you have to, you absolutely don't. And there's a far healthier, more balanced way to do it, and it's called a balanced calorie controlled diet where you don't eat processed foods and you work out. Done.